taking a look at the Cardinals and what they were able to accomplish, uh, you know, a little bit interesting because, you know, they, they made a deal and they, they felt, I don't know. I mean, look, I, I have Arizona and you didn't have them just taking a quick look here. Yeah. You didn't have them, you know, top five best or top, top three least. So it was somewhere maybe in the middle. I had them also as a solid, it's okay. Solid draft, but I don't know. The thing that's definitely the issue with it, if if I'm an Arizona fan, is I put myself in a position where I'm and I'm only looking. I'm not I don't care about next year. I may not be alive next year. And I understand the strategy. I'm not saying this is a bad strategy, but this is the difference, as you were saying before, about strategy for the team as opposed to what we're just looking at as far as their draft and what they picked. And if we're just talking about what they picked and their players, where they started the draft and where they ended, that's the biggest issue because they ended up with just one first round pick. And that pick, I'm sorry, but it seemed to be a little bit early on Paris Johnson. I think he could have, because we talked about this offensive line group not being anywhere near as good as the last year or two, and yet an offensive lineman goes sixth in the draft. So I thought that was a little interesting because you don't get Will Anderson. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't get one of those. You don't get Jamal Carter. You don't get one of those potential monster players. You got a guy that, all right, you know, good player. Maybe he'll be a good starter for you for the next 10 years. But that's my biggest issue with their draft. Otherwise, I think they made some pretty good pickups overall. Yeah. No, I'm on the same page with you. And when they made that move up, I just immediately thought it was going to be Jalen Carter just because of the best player. Uh, you know, they, they moved down to 12 and then they moved, moved back, back up. They moved yeah. back up. They still came out on top with the amount of draft capital that Houston gave to them for that Will Anderson pick really sets that sets them up uh, very nicely for next year. They have a couple of extra, I think they have a first and a third next year from those guys. Um, My question on Paris Johnson, even if you feel that he is a worthy of being picked in the top 10, it just seemed like the the offensive line does need to get better. I I agree. I also think Kyler Murray needs to get a lot better at getting rid of the football and, and stop playing backyard football, recess football and holding on to for three, four five seconds. Every time he doesn't see his initial read. I think that's part of the pass rush or pass protection issues in Arizona, but you know, they, they have Humphreys at left tackle. He was signed to a three year extension in August, 2022. So he's that left tackle for at least two, three more years. Okay. Um, Josh Jones, he's a 2023rd rounder. He has played guard and tackle. He looked, and he was a college tackle. He was horrific inside. He looked okay at left tackle last year when DJ Humphreys got hurt. No debate of whether or not there's a competition for the job. You know, Josh Jones is probably a, a swing tackle. That's probably his, his best spot. But they also have Kelvin Beecham at right tackle. So the plan for Paris Johnson, if we want to break this down and be honest, they traded back up to six for a guard. That's where Paris Johnson is likely going to pay next year. He's not yes. playing left tackle. He's not playing left tackle. I don't think he's playing left tackle for two, three years at the earliest. And that's if they, if they get rid of DJ Humphreys, who is a solid player, if, if he comes back healthy. So you could say, oh, hey, Dave, long term, he's going to be the right tackle. Okay. I mean, I, I understand that right tackles still have value in the NFL, but – are you still okay with the fact that you traded back up a pretty aggressive trade offer to get back to six and took a tackle that we agree is good, not great to play right tackle, but maybe he's going to play guard. You're kind of not sure. That's where I thought there was a little bit of a disconnect back on that trade up. And the last thing I'll say about the trade, if they stayed at 12 and did not give up the draft capital to come back up, do you really think that a, he might not, that he would not have been there or another player that is probably at the same position that fits your scheme and might be graded just about the same level. Would he have been there at 12? And the answer is yes. So sorry about that. Um, Yeah. It's that's, that's where I stand on this trade. It just seems like there's more reasons than not, that it just was not the the right move. Yeah. So look uh, again, and I kind of understand maybe what the philosophy is, is that, you know, with the new GM in town, we have to kind of, I think the, the 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 meeting and the and the and the general consensus must have been, all right. We're gonna, this is this is gonna be a long process, yeah. And this is gonna this is gonna take me 
you got to give me two or three years to 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 because this roster is not where we where you, where we need it to be, and that's what this draft was. This draft was about as you mentioned, it's about the future. This wasn't about yeah. this year, um, but that is still going to be something that they're going to have to live with if one of those guys and non quarterbacks, including Will Anderson, ends up being a superstar. Right. That's what they're going to have to live with. Now the yep. John Gaines pick, by the way, in the fourth round. Yeah. Tell tell me that has to be for center, doesn't it? I believe so. I mean, everything that they're saying, they just completely camera in multiple positions, highly intelligent. They said one of the smartest linemen they met with in the entire pre-draft process, just from an intellect, football understanding, football IQ. And they kept every time they talked about him post-draft, they mentioned they mentioned center. So it has to be. Yeah. Is the starting center job going to be handed to him? I don't think no. so. But they also said their top five linemen are going to be the starting five. And that's where Paris Johnson gives you options. John Gaines certainly gives you yep. options. And I can't imagine – I'm looking at the depth chart right now. I don't think anyone's going to beat him out for that starting right, center that job. Would be a big, <laughs> that would be that a would, big problem. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the, the Cardinals, they're going to be playing – Two rookies likely right next yep. to each other. If you think Paris is going to be there, which you know it, it looks good on paper, it might not look good in twenty twenty three though. Yeah, sure. You know, most linemen don't respond very well to to year one play, especially when they're playing next to another rookie. So yeah. that's just a little bit of a risk there, and just temper the expectations. All right, and uh, yeah. So uh, overall, though, uh, I, I think the thing that I did like uh, specifically as far as the talent. Uh, and, and I've talked about this before the draft. I'd like Clayton Toon as a a really good, especially if you've got Kyler Murray, it's important that they now have, I think what they uh, could have landed is a long-term backup for yeah. Kyler Murray. And that's important. Uh, Very important. Kyler Murray's body, and we saw it last year, is going to get banged up. He's going to miss games. It's yep. going to continue to happen over his career. You have to have someone that you could. So I think that's a nice pickup. And uh, getting the linebacker from Auburn in round five, I thought was also uh, was also a pretty good uh, pickup. Uh, yeah, as far as being able to get him in that spot, I think there's some dysfunction in that organization that it, they turned the corner. They got the wrong people out of the building, the right people in the building, and that it's going to take a couple years to shift this culture around. And you know, they have to hope that Kyler Murray grows up a little bit. Uh, but the selections of B.J. Ojolari, Garrett Williams, the corner from Syracuse, and Pepo, from, the linebacker from Auburn, those guys are – they fit that ethos. They fit that culture. They fit that uh, – the scheme very well too. I mean all three of those guys schematically. Owen Pepo, um, Gannon said that he reminds him a lot of Gannon uh, – of Kaiser White. And he's exactly what the NFL needs at the inside linebacker position when you're talking about the speed. So they had value throughout the entire draft. I will say that about the, the, the draft class. And remember, we we're, were talking about Will Anderson as a perfect fit because they needed edge rushers. So yeah. uh, they really do need Ajolari to, to, to be a – because basically what they're doing is they're, they're now relying on a second and two third-round picks. Even though it's a different GM, a second and two third-round picks – Sanders, Thomas, and Ashilari, at least they're hoping big time one of those guys can make a big step up next year. So Yeah. Yeah. They lost a lot of pass rush from a team that did not was not very good at pass rush. So they're starting from scratch. And you're right. I think all three of those guys have to hit. 